One of the holy grails in ovarian cancer research is early detection. And a seminal study came out about a year and a half ago that showed, unfortunately, that early detection of ovarian cancer, even in an earlier stage of the cancer, did not impact mortality. And that was devastating news for our community. It really was. And also it basically pointed to the fact that symptoms, while important to know to get an earlier diagnosis, will not actually help identify the disease and impact mortality. And that's also been a long message that we've had that we've said, you know, know your body and pay attention to the symptoms, which we're still absolutely saying, but it won't make a difference necessarily in the diagnosis. And that was really, really hard to hear. So we started to think about what can we recommend? What will make a difference? And typically, I mean, ovarian cancer is a rare disease. Approximately one to 2% of the population might get ovarian cancer in their lifetime with someone with a mutation a genetic mutation has a 40 to 50 percent chance. So first we started to think about that and 20 percent of ovarian cancers are actually related to a genetic mutation. So we started to think about that 20 percent. So our first message is to know your risk. If you have a family history of ovarian, uterine, colorectal, um, any of these cancers, breast cancer, that would be important to know. And that can be in first degree or second degree relatives, or even just you're aware that your extended family has many cases, perhaps a mixture of some of those cancers. So that's important. And if you do, we encourage you to talk to your doctor about your risk. Our new recommendation is actually for average risk women, which is unusual for us. We typically don't message to the general public. Again, it's a rare cancer. However, there is a surgery that if you're already having a pelvic surgery, you could ask your doctor about. And that's called an opportunistic salpingectomy. It sounds like a big scary word, but it actually just means having your fallopian tubes removed. And many surgeries like a hysterectomy or tubal ligation, having your tubes tight would be surgeries that you could be having and you could talk to your doctor about also removing your tubes at that point. And what that would do is prevent ovarian cancer in a number of cases, because we know that at least 70% of the most common and lethal ovarian cancer originates in the fallopian tubes. So if we can catch the cancer before it ever even starts, that's huge. There are so many of these procedures done in the United States every year. Um, I believe 600,000 hysterectomies, millions of gynecologic surgeries. So if we could touch that in some way and this becomes standard of care, where if a doctor is just doing a pelvic surgery, they would speak to the patient about having their tubes removed, that would be huge. Go up, like we'd go such a long way towards prevention. Our fallopian tubes basically carry eggs to our uterus in women or anyone with ovaries. And if you're past your childbearing years, you really essentially don't need your fallopian tubes. And of course, that would be when you would make a decision. And, and part of our recommendation is talk to your doctor if you're beyond your childbearing years and you're having another pelvic surgery. People often ask us, why do you call it ovarian cancer if it starts in the fallopian tubes? And not all ovarian cancer necessarily starts in the fallopian tubes, but we know that most does, if not all, at least 70%. And usually what happens is it's going to be precancerous lesions that eventually migrate to the ovaries. And the reason it's called ovarian cancer is because typically when symptoms present and someone's diagnosed, it's already in the ovaries. And that's also why it's often a later stage. Ovarian cancer is a rare cancer and about one to 2% of the population is at risk of developing it. So, so it is a low risk for most people. However, if you have a genetic mutation or family history, which might indicate a mutation, your risk can rise to 40 to 50% in terms of getting ovarian cancer. And that's very significant. In terms of mutations, there are several mutations that confer risk for ovarian cancer, but probably the best known, and, and as far as we know, the largest in terms of numbers of cases related to a mutation is the BRCA mutation. And this can actually be carried on the maternal or paternal side. So it's very important to know the history from both sides of your family. Certainly, if you know someone in your family has one, it would be important to be tested. But if you have the, that history, it would also be important to be tested. So we launched a genetic testing program. It's a pilot program for free genetic testing for people that are at risk. And that's available on our website at ocrahope.org. And you know, there's a screening test that you just have to go through. But even if you don't pass that test for, for risk on our site, it doesn't mean you're not at risk. And you should definitely talk to your doctor if you're concerned. Ovarian cancer is a rare disease, as I've mentioned, and approximately two or three years ago, it was 22,000 women a year that were diagnosed. But we've seen the rate falling recently, which of course is wonderful news. 
about 19,700 or so people diagnosed every year. However, out of those 19,700, 13,000 women will die from the disease. So it's a highly deadly cancer. It's the deadliest of all the gynecologic cancers. There are a number of things that actually can lower your risk for ovarian cancer. Um, of course, one thing that increases your risk that you really can't do anything about is age, um, only because typically older women uh, beyond menopause are diagnosed, but not always. And we certainly know a lot of cases where that's not true. But um, some protective factors are having taken birth control pills, having been pregnant, and breastfeeding. So it's interesting. I know people don't often know that, but it can be insulating to a certain degree. It's really important to know your risk and you know consider a preventative surgery if you are having another pelvic surgery and you're at average risk. If you might be at increased risk, please talk to your doctor about what options you might have.